All right, hello, I am Peter Hendrickson, and this is uh, my talk, Four Signs Your Publisher is Stealing Your Money. Uh, I have a company in, I'm part of a company in Stockholm called Landfall Games. We make games, and I've dealt with some publishers, and, and some of them steal your money, and I'm here to tell you what signs that you can uh, look out for to make sure that it doesn't happen to you. Um, so the four golden signs, um, it's really important that you see that they give you eye contact. Like people that, that don't give you eye contact are most likely trying to steal your money. Uh, and like you shouldn't know your mother's maiden name. Like I don't know my mother's maiden name. They, this, like this, that, there's no point. Um, and rich uncles, just, I think they're a myth. They don't exist. So don't trust that either. Um, and if they're already stolen your IP or wallet, then you're, yeah, you're, you're just already in the grad. Uh, so I'm not actually going to talk about four signs your publisher is stealing your money. I, I chose that title because it's clickbaity, clickbaity, I think. Uh, and it will make most likely get people to come to a talk that are on the brink of getting a publisher or maybe working with publishers. And I'm trying to tell you to most likely not work with publishers. Uh, do it yourself and how you do it. Uh, what's hard about it and what's easy. But why can I do that? Um, so I'm, I'm as said, Peter Henningsson. I started my game development career at the university here, 2011, I think. And by 2012, me and my friend David that sits here in the front row managed to get someone to fool. We, he fooled someone to may pay us to make a game. And it looked like this. People thought Kinect was a thing back in the days. We got paid for this. Do you know how insane that is? What? They would never pay me to do this. Uh, anyway, I don't know if they were happy, but I mean, we were super psyched about this. Um, then, during my last year of university, I, I joined up with a bunch of friends and we created a company called Guri Games. Uh, and we made a game called Magnetic Cage Closed. Let's just watch the trailer. Published by Gambitious. Gambitious is now called Good Shepherd, I think. If the walls in this place could talk, the stories they would tell. So, as many students Welcome do... Welcome to the queue. Don't talk over me. Uh, as many students do, uh, we set out to like make a puzzle game because that's like the most brilliant thing ever and it's never been made before. Uh, so we made a first person puzzle platformer instead of the original 2D. Uh, and we, we tried our best. This year took about two years to make, maybe more. Uh, and it, it didn't do very well. And the game was honestly okay, but it wasn't like good. And I don't think I've ever, in, in the development of this game, like, sat down and was like, oh my god, this game is so good. And, and this is somewhere important when it comes to publishers, because we didn't know how anything really worked, but we would go to conferences and show this game a lot, and we would hang out with people, and the air would be that, like, everyone just, just you know, if you get a publisher, everyone's, like, pitching to publishers, and, like, oh, that publisher is over there, you go talk to them. It's, like, a lot of hustling. And I, I never really sat down and thought about why do we need publishers? Like, what do they do? Um, so we signed uh, Gambitious. I thought I told you to not do this. We signed with Gambitious, uh, and they helped us publish the game. They helped us get press. Um, and we were, like, featured in, like, a lot of cool sites that have cool names. Uh, and we kind of felt like we had checked all the boxes. We'd like, got publisher, check. Uh, for those who don't know, Gambitious is like a sister company to Devolver, and Devolver is in the Western world the coolest indie company that you can ever physically even find. Um, so we were like, we might make it, but we didn't. And I was kind of like, but we got all the press and all the things, we, what? And the publisher. So then I left, and I joined. Philip and, and Willem on two other projects, but those are not mentioned. And then we made this game. Uh, so Cluster Track is a 
pretty stupid game when you you just jump on trucks, stay on truck. It's a platformer, but not a puzzle platformer. Um, and even from the beginning, when when Willem made the first prototype and showed it online, we got uh, the game got like pretty good attention. And I remember the first time I spoke with with Willem Phil about it, they were like, "We have 10,000 newsletter subs." I was like, "Oh my god, that's insane! That's a big number." And by January 2017, 16, 16. Uh, we had like a hundred thousand and we were about to launch our uh, free alpha of the game and we had this one gift that went super viral and and what followed that viral gift was just emails and emails of different publishers or marketeers and like everyone wanted a little piece of the cluster truck and I was having all the calls in my bed like 24 7 for like a week uh, and we had the money to make the game. Like, not a lot of money, but we could have finished it by ourselves. Like, it, it would be possible. But we didn't really know how marketing worked. And we were like, are we doing marketing? We don't know. Like, we were posting GIFs, but is that marketing? You need a publisher to do marketing, right? You need to go to the conventions. That's very expensive. Um, and that's like, also, that's what you do. You just get a publisher. So we got a publisher named named time build um, and it's also important like sidetrack I'm gonna talk a lot of shit about stuff I'm not a fan of the concept of publishers I, I like that they exist but I think they're doing it wrong but the critique that I'm airing is not directly towards either tiny build or ambitious or whatever name that I may say publishers they just Imagine I replace that with just publisher. So if I say devolver, I just say publisher. Great. Um, so we signed with Tiny Build and we released the game 2016 September. Uh, Tiny Build helped us go to um, three big conventions with cool booths. Um, they um, helped us do the, the ports that we probably would not have been able to do. We did almost a sim release. Uh, we probably wouldn't have been able to do a sim release without them. And at the very end, they helped us out with a bit of cash to get the game done. Um, but right before the release of that game, we went to Game Jam and we made this game. No, this is not the trailer I'm, I'm showing you. This is the wrong trailer. Totally accurate. Simulator. Pre-alpha trailer. Here we go. We made a game about blue and red people fighting each other in about a week. And then Willem made his video. And then everything was blowing up. Like, uh, this game got so viral that it was more Google than Battlefield 1. Like, two weeks after their Battlefield 1 trailer. Uh, Everyone played this game. Like there's like two, three hundreds of millions of views on YouTube of this of this stuff. And but we were still making Cluster Truck when this shit went viral. So we finished Cluster Truck and then sat down and was like, okay, so what do we do with taps? And my our like situation was kind of like when Cluster Truck had a viral GIF times eleven thousand millions. Uh, so we could cherry pick any publisher that we want and I had meetings with everyone that I was interested in uh, and I tried to like haggle them to like get them to lower the price their their shares and whatever and every time we got close to signing I uh, was kind of we, we, we kind of sat down and we, we were just like what did they do like what are we paying for uh, and we didn't really know like we had worked with one and like we knew they pressed the button to release it on Steam. Like that was they, yeah, that was good. Uh, and they took us to conventions, but we didn't really see a lot of worth in that. Nothing that we could measure from those conventions um, changed. Like we didn't get more subscribers on our YouTube channel. We didn't get more subscribers on our newsletter. Uh, so we we're like, okay, but so what is it? Uh, and we like went in that circle forever, and we looked at like. So how much did our publisher cost us at Cluster Truck? 
And we were like, okay, if we had the money before we made Cluster Truck, we could have hired a little room of student publishers that didn't know what they were doing, but you hire 60 of them and one of them might figure it out, right? So we're like, that might be a plan. So we went into self-publishing. Um, so we had to figure out what they actually do, right? And I talked to a lot of people. Um, also, some of these points are based of like, before this talk, I talked to random people in the convention and be like, yeah, what do you think a publisher does? Uh, and this is, these are the points. So publishers do contacts. They know someone at Steam that will get you that front page banner. And they know they are like really good friends with Xbox. And that's like, you just get on Xbox and like easy because they're buds, right? Uh, they also have this amazing fan base that will just buy your game because they just love the publisher so much. They're just blind buyers, uh, which is great to have when you're selling something. Um, they're also amazing at marketing. They just pick up a game and then they make that game sell magically. And they, this is also, I think this is bullshit. I get this a lot of time. Like people say like, yeah, they like steal your creative freedom and they tell you what to do. And I'm like, yeah, because they know what you should do because they've been in this business for like 15 years and their job is literally to sit in and look at games and say, can this sell? And if they have critique on your game, it's pretty valuable and you should probably listen. Uh, so I, I choose to look at it as, uh, as, it as development help, which you, is a, a really valuable thing with a publisher, um, which is advice like uh, when to, what, what, what date to release or like, yeah, shit like that. Um, another thing is that a publisher can most likely give you structure because uh, not everyone, but some publisher deals work in a like milestone basis and they will expect something delivered by a date. And that can be pretty hard, at least for us to do because we don't really like have deadlines or something. And some people really like deadlines, so that's good for them. And they they know partners like, I get into that later. So at the cost of a tiny room of, of students, you get a publisher. Um, so I, I started trying to get those magical contacts for, for our game. Oh, let me show that. That's fun. No. Yes. So this is the first game we like self-published. That's a lie. We self-published two games before, but they didn't do as well, so I don't mention that. So Stick Fight is kind of like a Smash-ish game, like you play with four friends and you try to kill each other. And it looks kind of funny. And it's physics based, like, like most things we do. Uh, this game was developed in about four months by members of the of the landfall team. They call themselves Landfall West because they happen to sit on the west side of the room, and also Philip, whose last name is Philip Vestre or something. So it's like it doesn't make any sense, but that's that's the thing. The game was released in November, September 2017. Yeah, last year, and we hit. 2 million sales, like 2 or 3 months ago, I think, on, on PC. 2 million sales. Yeah, that's bonkers. Uh, and we're also hitting up uh, Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and Switch within the end of the year. Uh, so going about getting all those... Where am I? Here we go. Here we go. Contacts. Uh, I, my impression of context is that it's mostly a lie. Like people like to think that because they're so friends with this one dude that they're good friends with, they get benefits. But I think that's just bullshit. Uh, like they will look at your game and say, "I like this game." It's always product first. Like you can, they can hate you. They will still help you if they like your product. Uh, and getting contacts to different platforms, say Steam, uh, Microsoft. Sony and Nintendo is pretty easy. You can literally email most known developers and for be like, hey, 
we've met once. Can I have an introduction to Nintendo? And people will be like, sure, I don't give a shit. Uh, or like, I have a problem with Steam. Can you please help me? You can, there's literally, you can just email Steam. They have an email. You can just send that. Uh, and then like Steam doesn't work in the way that you can like hustle your front page banner. Like that's automated. So there's no real point in having a contact there. Sure, getting uh, visibility on GOG and Humble is probably hustleable, meh, but that's like 3% of sales or something. Like it doesn't make a big difference. Uh, and Xbox and PlayStation 4, you can def definitely hustle, but you don't like you can make games without even being on those platforms. Um, and I, I uh, context is a lot of networking, and it's it's I, I meet people that have like an incorrect understanding of networking, where they feel it's like you go to a convention, and then you like look up on a list who is important at the convention, and then you just kind of follow them around with cards, which doesn't work because people don't like that. So just be nice and have friends and get more friends. And then if you really need to talk with this important person, you can be like, hey, does someone know this person? Can you intro me? And then be like, hey, I have a thing to talk about. No one likes to be approached and be like, hey. And then you're like, do you have something to say? And you're like, no, I'm just, yeah, fuck that. Uh, fan base. Publishers do have fan base. And they do sometimes like look more at the games that their favorite publisher does than, than other games. But also like realize that we are devs. We know, or I at least know like all the known publishers and I know what they do, but consumers barely know like Ubisoft. Like they know EA probably, but like they're, they're pretty dumb. Like they, they barely know who Devolver is and that's like the most famous one. So they, I doubt they know who like Good Shepherd is or uh, 505 or something like whatever um, but it's the most important thing here is like look at like a publisher say Devolver hasn't done a product like they haven't done anything to build a fan base so everyone that likes Devolver for their games are people that actually like a game that they've published and they are they they, they have somehow gotten confused and think Devolver made the game and that's why they like them so the Volvo hasn't created a community. They have kind of scraped off communities from all the games that they've ever published. And this is not unique to the Volvo. This is how publishing works. Uh, and this will happen with your game too. So if you're looking like in a really long time span, the value of a community is huge. And getting every single one of your consumers to recognize you as the developer and creator of your own game is really important. Which is why you need a community manager. Because otherwise, you'll be like us our first week of cluster truck when we were like on the forums and they were like, oh, there's a bug. And we were like, oh my God, it's too much social weirdness. How do I answer this? And we kind of just didn't, which wasn't great. We had two, 300 emails a day that we didn't answer, that we just kind of scrolled through and was like, oh my God, there's so much work to do here, but we can't do it. And there was angst. Uh, and now Hannah does that for me or us, so then we don't need to do that anymore, which is perfect. Uh, she's also a lot better at handling shit when stuff goes wrong. Uh, there was a funny thing with Tab G, where we have a we have a censorship in that game, so that if you write ugly words, we replace them with sentences. So if you would write, wait, can I? I can't really do this. How do I do this? If you would write. A racial slur, it would replace it with, I don't even know what it replaces. I'm a bit racist, to be honest. Or like if you have a homophobic slur, it replaces it with, uh, isn't it great that everyone can love who they want or something? It's just that we scramble our code, so we have this array with all of these horrible words, and then they are scrambled all up in the code. So when someone decompiled it, it was just like, oh my god, they, they have just put so many offensive shit in their code. And they went on the forums and everything was burning and I was in South Korea in a cab. I was like, oh my God. And I just saw everyone kind of freak out and I was like, where's Hannah? What's happening? I was like, everyone's calling Hannah. And she'd like put down the phone for 15 minutes, but then it was like, okay, it's handled, which is great. Have that person. Um, and community is amazing when you like make your next game because they were like, listen to you and love you even though you like they, they, they don't actually like the game but they would still like play it and 
do QA for you, which is expensive. Uh, we could never have done Tab D uh, without our community because we were Tab D is a 50-player battle royale game, by the way, that that we made as a joke. But we needed them to test it. Um, and then we're at marketing. How much time do I have? I have some time. Do I? Ah. Okay. Marketing. Okay, I'm gonna run through the important parts. So. A misconception with marketing and publisher is that publishers do marketing for you, and they don't. No one does that. They buy someone to do it. You can buy someone to do it. It's called a PR firm. They're easy to hire. You just press a button, they're hired, and they do their shit. Just with money, you solve that problem. But also, no one can market your game. You're the only one. The designers and the creators of the game is the only one that can market the game, because marketing a game is not about cheating a system or getting a review up. Reviews don't matter. Let me show you. Like, there, like the the thought that press media is important is the biggest lie that PR companies tell us, man. Like it's go away. It's this is so dumb. Where are we? Uh. Anyway, my point is gonna be that there's like almost no comments on this thing at the Polygon, and then we go Verge, and there's like three comments, uh, and then Kotaku. This is what, 38,000 views? What? That's a bullshit YouTube video, man. Like, a good YouTube video is a couple of million views. This is like, what, you're gonna make me 3,000 articles? And it takes a lot of time. You need to, like, write a press kit and, like, do an interview. It takes, like, infinite time. And then, like, is it only our games? No. Splatoon 2, amazing big. It has 3,000 comments. Might sound a lot, but if you multiply that, I think it's like 500 some shit, you get, like, half a million views. Which is not a lot. Like no one, no one cares about Splatoon 2. Does not care about a video with half a million views. That's just no one cares. Uh, then, but there are games that are doing better. Okay, this is IGN Nordic. It doesn't show you. Sometimes he just switches here for some reason, without really me wanting to do that. Uh, okay, I'm just gonna trust me on this one. Review media is bullshit. Doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is organic reach, organic growth. Well, other things matter, okay. I don't know everything. But in my mind, the only thing that matters for us is organic growth and organic reach because it will tell you uh, how much people are willing and incentivized to see your product, to want to play it and share it, which really matters when you release the game. So look at marketing as a way to test different approaches into what will work when we finally release the game. And don't look at like a tweet of 500 retweets as, oh my god, we did marketing here. No, you, you look at it and say, okay, this type of presentation of our game works. Uh, say, where am I now? No. Look at this. Look at this. No. Okay. We made a little video of a unit called Sticky Hands Baluma. It has 120,000 views. I don't think people would buy the game because they saw this video of 120,000 views, but we know that this unit here, the Sticky Hands Baluma, is probably going to be pre pretty appreciated in the game because everyone wanted to see that shit happen. And that doesn't really matter if it's a video or if it's in the game. That's just amazing shit, right? So you can like know stuff about your game before you release it, which is amazing. Uh, what else can you do? How are you doing? This is a fun video. We we built in a, a hack in Cluster Track so that we can go into people's streams and take over their game. We do this. Now the pressure's off. Okay, this is the good part. Okay. We stop time. Whoa. It doesn't know what's happening. Okay. We're going up. Oh, look at the And this, this hack that we did created the most viewed VOD in Twitch history <laughs> that date. I, don't, I haven't checked this, this up in a while. This is the coolest thing and Magic this, has ever this happened. Is, this is marketing done, done by game development. Like, you, you can't hire a PR company to make this happen. And this is by far the easiest way to reach out as a game development studio because we know how to 
make games. You can put Hillary and Trump in the game, and of course people love that. Two people work related. But Mr. Trump, you're not a nice person. I love the Saudis. Work related emails, work related emails, personal emails. Personal. The American, I get elected president. We have losers. Somebody from China. Then I have five minutes to defend myself. After I'm done, I'm gonna get a question that says, oh, that only works for your game. Yeah, damn right it does. Because we make the game that it works for. And we don't like randomly end up in a, in a game that, that we can market. We, we like iterate our way there. Let me show you how tabs looked before it was marketable. Where is it? YouTube. <coughs> Lots of cubes. This is what tabs look like in the like most early stages of tabs. No one, no one thought this was fun. No one's laughing right now. It's, it's, but it's a great game. This game is amazing. It's so good. And we spent hours on this game, but like we kept posting it, and no one cared. And we were like, okay, let's try to. Maybe boxes aren't fun, uh, so we like remove the boxes, and apparently then it goes viral. Like. <coughs> We also make a lot of games that just doesn't go anywhere. This is a VR game about playing tennis with guns and hammers. Bam. Yep. <laughs> Didn't really go anywhere. Uh, this is some kind of fight game. <laughs> where you fight a, a worm, eventually. Where is it? Look at that. <laughs> Um, let's see, let's try it. marketing, money, money, money is always important, publishers give you money, if you need money, you just kind of need money, uh, I don't really have a good solutions, but there are other sources of income that you can take, you can find a loan, or get an investor, or get a product-based investment. Uh, there's also really cool sources of money that most people don't know about. <coughs> like a lot of successful indie developers. Uh, actually, the first time someone told me to like, why do you have a publisher was uh, John Baez from Behemoth. They made Castle Crashers and Alien Hominade. They're like, they made Newgrounds as well. Uh, and he was like, publishers are the worst. They just, well, they do nothing. I do that work in like an hour a week. It's easy. I was like, oh my god, maybe I can do this. Uh, so then I did it. Uh, and he has a like, he he has a fund that he calls like Gold Digger Fund or something, where he basically funds your whatever money you need, and you have to pay him back 107 percent. But that's it. That deal is amazing. There are several of these deals out there that can be had without giving away a large percent of your chair of your, of your money. Uh, and I will give you four things that publishers do that is shitty, but it's technically stealing your money. But yeah, sequel rights. Like it's really common for publishers to stop taking IP rights, but now they just take sequel rights, and they're like, yeah, well that's not the same. But you're like but I can't make a sequel without you. And you're like, yeah. And you're like, but what do I do with the IP then? And they're like, nothing. And you're like, oh, OK. Uh, excessive recoups, like you sign a publisher and you let them recoup marketing. That means that they will recoup every convention that they go to. And they will pay their hotel and flight and yada yada, which is fine if that's what you want them to do. but. Publishers have a very different motivations of going to conventions than developers do because publishers need to front face to developers. So they need to go to business conferences and whatever to meet developers and they need to show developers that they have the cool games. It makes sense for them to go there. It doesn't make sense for you to go there. It doesn't make sense for them to take your money to go there, in my personal opinion. Uh, it's also very common to for publishers to look like developers and to speak like developers and be like, yes, we spent a lot of time on this feature or we are going to make a new DLC next month. This is just bullshit. Just cap that in the butt. 
they're killing your fan base and they're trying to like scoop out more of your audience because they don't know the value of it. Uh, even the publishers that really try to be really clear and not do this, it will automatically happen because press is also dumb and will not understand it sometimes and say, publisher, said publisher made this game, blah, blah, blah. And most likely, the publishers will be the ones taking the interviews and then it will just seem awful. Uh, and no upfront money, if someone tries to like sign a deal with you, there's like, I will publish your game for 30% of your game. Unless you know this person really well, don't ever do this. Publishing a game is about pressing a button or having money and hiring people. It's not that hard. All right, in 2018, publishers work for you. Stay indie, that's me. And I have 13 minutes for questions, I think, if we have any questions. If you have comments, you can keep them to yourself. No. <laughs> <laughs> just please form a question. Don't just talk, talk in the mic. Do we have any questions? I can see anything. Oh. Oh, cool. Mon? Hey. Can I sign you. the box game? I know you. <laughs> So the box game seems nice. The box game is looking really dope. Yeah, man. can I sign that? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> we're actually working on making the box game. We're, we're, we're going full circle. We're making tabs into the box game, maybe. Nice. Yeah. We're going to have square characters. No, we're not. Um, how about publishers that are developers as well, like Shucklefish? Are they to be trusted or? I personally really think Shucklefish is doing really cool stuff. Uh, they have what I've heard of really fair deals uh, and I haven't heard them act exploitively in any manner. And, and to be clear, the reason why some developers slash, like developers that are also publishers can do this because they sign a lot fewer games. And when you don't have to account for failure and you can max and you can only sign shit that you absolutely are sure works, then you can have far better deals, but you can also not take risks. And I think Chucklefish is, is a lot on, on that track. I don't see them taking a lot of risks, but they seem to do fair deals. Uh, uh, how did you get, like in the beginning when you started making games, how did you get money then? Was I uh, had a student loan. Okay. Yeah. Huh? William lived at home. William lived at home, yeah. So that's that's enough? Just student loans? Yeah, well I I don't know. We that's we I then I worked at like I emailed the school like eleven thousand times and somehow convinced them to let me teach. That was a bad choice. <laughs> uh and I did that for a while, but yeah. Mostly Mostly that Willem stayed home and made airball to be okay to be super clear Willem stayed home for one year and made airball living off his mother's money uh, Which is privilege of course uh, and Airball our very 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 first game made about 100k it made 16,000 sales and that let me and Philip go on and work for like almost no pay for about eight months and that Founded Cluster Truck, and luckily Cluster Truck was a hit. Like that's just random luck. Most of shit is just random luck. Yeah, thanks for the talk. Um, you went into detail describing the problems with publishers, and I really appreciate the critique. Uh, some eye-opening stuff there. But can you elaborate on prescribing what would you like publishers to be in your perfect world? So maybe we can aspire for that better. Yes. Okay. So it's it's more of a confused communication where a lot of publishing today, it used to be completely different. Like actually publishing and distributing a game used to be a lot of work. It's just that that part is no longer a lot of work. Uh, and most of the work, like most of the value that people, at least that I talk to, feel they get from publishers is money. And maybe then they are not a publisher, but a product-based investment. That just that also has their logo on your shit. Like if you want to like take money from someone and then give them a percent and then they don't put their logo on your shit 
and confuse the whole fan base and whatever, and like thinking that they make games because they don't, then it's a completely different thing. Um, I also don't hate publishers. I think there are definitely right times to sign publishers. And mathematically and functionally, you should definitely sign a publisher if you can get more money to make the game than, than the game will make. Then you have just won. So if that's your situation, get a publisher. But you can't know that. If you will make far more money than it costs to make the game, then you are probably better off just doing it yourself, if you can find the money. Are we done? Someone is over there. Uh, hi. Uh, you mentioned uh, project-based investment. Yeah. Where and how do you find those? <laughs> uh, there, there, there are a few. You can, the, yeah, I can meet you afterwards so we can talk about that. I'm not doing that on stage. That would be problematic for me. Yo. Um, Yo. How are you doing? Oh, hello, Hakan. <laughs> How would you, well, if there was a scenario in which you would be ready to give money to a game? Uh, what did you say? Like, would you ever, if, if you were to be a, an investor, how would you look, uh, how would you evaluate the game that you would put your money in? Will it make money? Yeah, how, how do you? Uh, oh, how I, th how I look at games and if they make money. Uh, I spend, I don't know, I spend a lot of time just going through the popular on, on on the new and popular releases on Steam. Like, I'm mostly every day is looking at those games, trying to get a feel of what people are buying, uh, how those trailers look, uh, what the theme is, and how the communities are reacting to the game. Um, so it all depends on the timing, of course. But uh, a, a, a game that has, I, th I think, it's, it can't be like another game, but worse. If your pitch is, it's like this then you probably, I wouldn't be excited. Like you might make money, but it's kind of a weird bet. Uh, if it's like completely fresh, I've never seen this gameplay before, and it, and it works and it's amazing, then that's just amazing. Uh, theme needs to be good. I don't know. I don't know, man. I, I'm just rambling. I'm asking because uh, it does, this doesn't give uh, a lot of space for completely innovative games. Or it does, though. Oh, how? I just said that the gameplay mechanic is, needs to be new and fresh. That's a pretty innovative thing, no? On Steam. Huh? Uh, on Steam. And that means that the gameplay have, has already been published on, for example, YouTube or GIFs or stuff like that, and people reacted uh, to it. Yeah, every, so every, to sell a game, to sell, I think to sell any product, you need to define both that there are people that want to buy it, and there needs to be a way for you to reach them. Like, you may, th you may say that all of these people in this little crowd will buy the game, but they don't visit the same places, and they don't talk about the same things, and they never meet, so you can't target them. Uh, you need to find your, your marketing channel, and the, mar the, like the, 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 the way the market works shapes what games we can make. That, that's just, in my mind, how it works. If you can't market a game, you can't you can't make it. Uh, hello. Hi, you Mark. mentioned uh, briefly that uh, <laughs> publisher don't market your game. They hire someone else to do it. Yeah. Do you have any experience uh, using a marketing firm or a PR firm? Yeah. Uh, I do. And uh, <laughs> Is it good? Did, did you? Did you uh, I have absolutely no idea, man. Like, you you like you meet and you're like you're gonna help us market this game. And they're like, yeah, good. And then what do you want us to do? I'm like, get us more videos. And they're like, okay, we'll do that. And then you pay the money. And then you're like, did they do it? And you're like, I don't really know, but I sure hope so. Uh, it's easier if you do PR because they will come back with like a report and say like this is these are the. These are the reviews that we got posted and yada yada. It's just like I, w I haven't paid anyone to do that yet because I don't see the value in doing it in the first place. 
Yeah, so I saw in your uh, trailer you're, you had the logo for developing and also for uh, publishing. So you're like self-publishing. Yeah. I was wondering, are you ever considering publishing other games and what would your deal be for them to be an uh, actual good publisher? Um, to these others? Let's see. No, that's not public yet. Uh, <laughs> um, so I, 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 yeah, I'm interested in working with other companies and like helping them build themselves to become self-sufficient, uh, and not do publishing for a studio, but to be a person that they can say, "Hey, we need we need Net Nintendo right now," and then I can be like, "Here's Nintendo," or like we need a PR firm, like take this one, uh, and like. Is this trailer good? Do we need some edits? I'm like, talk with these guys. Or like, yeah. So that they can like grow and become a self-published thing. The reason why we have two logos there is because I don't really know. Because it's made by not Landfall, it's made by Landfall West because they made it in their free time and everyone at Landfall is allowed to make their own games. So it's just kind of like a shit. Landfall West doesn't technically exist. Like it's not a form of company. It's just, yeah, I don't know. Everyone that works on Stickfight also works on Landfall. We done? We timed. I'm gonna Steve Karan is going up, right? I hear it's good. There you are. Thank you.